Good morning ladies and gentlemen, I'm Meteor69 and welcome back to update 6.2. Now, yesterday we had a look at the much changed Bosch 155 with that crazy um, auto loader gun. And today we're going to be looking at the other tier 10 that has been buffed and it is the STB. Now the STB has been, give, been given more frontal uh, turret armour and it's been given more side armor hull armor which more than double in fact on on the hull uh the turret armor is only just over sort of 10 uh, millimeters extra but it really does make a difference and the tank now is very good very the tank before was very good um but it now it's very very good um especially that side armor that side armor is the difference between between being HE'd and not. I mean, it used to have 35 millimeters of side armor. Now it has 75. So that's a big difference because yes, you still could be HE'd by those big guns, the Death Stars, the Jaegerus, um, but not so much now. The Foshes and the E100s, um, they are gonna struggle. And that is a big difference because you're a medium tank and you like to get behind these big tanks and obviously if you are trying to circle them you are exposing your side so having that extra what 30 40 millimeters 40 millimeters of side armor that really does make all the difference now we are we've got three replays this one is myself on uh, na and we've got two other replays that are very good replays and each replay we we get a few bounces on our turret and whether or not we would have got those bounces before the update i i don't know but it just for me i do feel like that i am bouncing more on on my turret uh, but again that could just be coincidence it could be coincident because the turret armor as i've said it's just above 10 extra so this battle so far we were on 4k damage we've bounced 700 damage so we are now going to focus this uh, WZ121. There is only two tanks left alive. So there is the FE4005 and then this uh, 121. So we're going to take this 121 out. And whilst we deal with him, our team are dealing with the FE4005. So we clear him and they clear the last remaining tank pretty much the same time. So 1100 blocked damage we've got, which wasn't too bad. 5,300 damage and it was only worthy of a first class. 1300 base XP. So not bad, not bad at all. But now we're going to get down to a couple of other games. So we have now Mas Masky. Uh, we're just going to call him Mask because I've no idea how to pronounce it. And he's on Fort Despair and he's going to play it very very he's not going to be aggressive he's going to just be super chill and i love these kind of gameplays because he's not rushing in he's si he's sitting behind and he's going to deal the damage and he's going to go in when it needs when he needs to go in so now he has a side shot on the t54 he is now spotted so there is three tds um Obviously, this map, there is usually a few TDs in that bush. So there's his first bounce on his turret. And now there is a T-54E1 sitting in a TD bush. Uh, great, great play from him. And his team are now, if you look at the minimap, his team are all together. Just look at the red team. They are all split apart. Now, you can see that red by spawn, uh, by spawn one. He is an E5, T110 E5. Uh, I'm not sure what he is doing um but at the moment they've now taken out the leopard one uh the t54 e1 is now a one shot so unfortunately he can't get that shot off there is two tanks down each but his team are still together there's still three tds now here's this t t110 e5 who has flanked around the whole entire map and now mask can just get behind and he can hold down again nice bounce there on on the turret it is four against four, so he's going to try and save these hit points. And these, these shots on this hatch are uh, amazing shots. Uh, surprisingly, they pen. Um, but luckily for him, this T110 E5 is actually shooting HE. Uh, great play from the T110 E5. No idea. And again, look, 
side plate, 137 damage. So that is fantastic hit point trading from Mask. And unfortunately for this T110 E5, he can't do nothing. And I'm sure sooner or later, he is going to find himself in this newbie matchmaking because he did not have a clue. Uh, but while he was dealing with him, his team have vanished. And it's just him and the T uh, Object 268 left. So here comes the FE4.05. One shot from him, one shot from the 268, and they bring it down to a two versus two. So he has still got a lot of hit points left, uh, but there is an E5, uh, sorry, an E3 and a grill remaining. So if he exposes himself and he gets shot once from each of them, uh, he's going to find himself in some serious trouble. So I love just how he's being patient. There is still four minutes left on the clock. There is no reason to rush in. He's just going to wait it out and he's going to wait for his opportunity. And he, his opportunity is going to come very quickly because his object 268 has decided to rush in. So as his 268 goes to the left, he is going to wait because the E3 has to, has to turn he needs to turn, otherwise he's going to have a 268 into the side. And there he goes. As soon as he turns, he is on. He is gone. And he is going to seize this opportunity and get behind. Unluckily for the 268, he does get shot from the E3 and the grill at the same time. So it now just leaves him versus an E3 and a grill. Now, I like what he's doing here. Usually what I would normally say in these kind of situations is ignore the tank without a turret because you can you can deal with him later you can circle him but instead he's dealing with him with him first dealing with him first means that only the grill will be looking so he does manage to clear him he's going to poke forward and the grill misses and that just means game over nice he roll there uh i'm not sure why he, he stumbled a bit he he should have just rushed in uh, but he managed to, to get over that finishing line. So 6,200 damage. And again, that battle was just nothing special. But I just love the the way that he was really super chill about it. He wasn't panicking. He waited for his opportunity and he played the match absolutely perfectly. So well-deserved ace. And thank you for sending me that in. Now, next up, we have Shock. Shocky, one of my good friends, Shocky, and he is on Normandy, and it is Supremacy. So he is going to rush towards base B. Remember, this tank has great gun depression. It has good gun depression, good view range. So getting into positions like this, especially now that the turret has been buffed, you can really deal some damage in these positions. So now he's going to have a mouse looking at him. Nice heat shot there into the cheeks on the mouse. Now the penetration on the STB is not the greatest so dealing these damages uh especially to a mouse from this distance is not so bad and there we go his first bounce on his turret um before the before the buff you could get bounces on the turret it was it was still a strong turret and, I'm, and as i've said they've only buffed it a tiny little bit but the replays that i've watched and the battles that i've played it just feels like it's actually been buffed a lot more than it has um, because in these kind of positions, you you can bounce anything that comes your way. Um, and that what's make it really good with the gun depression as well on this tank. It makes for a super, super strong tank. So Shockey's now going to turn back because there is three tanks dealing with his team. He's going to seize the opportunity and he's going to take out the 121B. And uh, now he was going to go for the Fosh, but he's now going to go for the E50 as the E50 is a lot lower hit points and he can easily take him out. So he's going to back up, get rid of the E50. And now he has got rid of the E50. This Fosh is in a lot of trouble because he's now going to have a medium behind him. Lovely 438 roll. He's got tanks in front of him and literally there is nothing this Fosh can do. Nothing at all. So Shocky is going to wait till the reload, get to the side, and he is going to take him out for his third kill. And now it is five on four. They now find an E100, straight a straight E100 on his own in the middle with the bad gun, the, the, the super bad gun. Well, I, I wouldn't say super bad, but it's it's not better than the other gun. And Shocky now can just circle him. Uh, the FB215B can take him out. So Shocky's now on 3.7. He's only lost a tad little bit of uh, hit points. 
and there is still a lot of hit points to get through. I mean, a full health 268, pretty much a full health mouse, and now uh, a 600 HP E75. So here comes the FV215B who bounces. I love what Shocky does here now. He gets the bounce, and he's gonna circle the E75, but he has this house to his right, protecting him from both the 268 and the mouse. Now, I thought he was gonna go for the mouse here. I thought he was gonna go for the mouse, uh, because as I've said, the object 268, hasn't got a turret and he is a lot easier to deal with come the end of the game um, but he's going to get one more shot the mouse misses and now he can just get around the house he can hide from a tank and he's going to go for the mouse so he's now on 6,000 damage the enemy are actually winning on supremacy points he still needs to be very careful because it is just a three versus two the mouse is very low hit points now he's going to ignore the mouse the mouse is gone and he is going to deal with the object 268. 6,800 damage, all he needs is one shot, and as soon as he gets down to 0.1 second reload, the FV215B takes him out. So he misses out on the 7,000 damage, unfortunately, but still a fantastic battle. 1,661 base XP. So that is the STB1. Great little buff for the STB1. Uh, I'm sure many more people will play the tank. It was a good tank uh, previously, but now with this buff, it just makes it even better. I'm Meezy69, guys. I hope you enjoy the video, and I'll see you soon.